Hi friends and welcome. Um, this is going to be another flower video and specifically I'm focusing on dahlias in this one. Um, it's the morning and I'm trying to get this in before the most of the heat of the day rolls in. It's uh, not quite 90 degrees now and it's um, about 11 a.m. So I'm focusing on dollies in this one because there's a lot of information going around on the internet that says you can't grow dollies in Texas. You can't grow dollies where it's hot and humid. And obviously it's not true because I have some dollies growing. It's really a matter of a combination between trial and error as well as figuring out how dollies are going to grow best in your environment um, that you're gardening in. So the, this is my second year growing dahlias. So I want to tell you what I did that didn't work. And I want to tell you what I'm doing now and what seems to be working and any trouble, troubles that I'm having. Um, so my first year I, um, planted dahlias in the ground in my front flower bed. And I actually planted, um, three, I think in this flower bed and I had one grow and it had two or three blooms and then it just didn't do well anymore and ended up rotting and all of the other ones that I planted in the ground rotted. So this year I wanted to try planting a dahlia, planting not a dahlia, but dahlias in my raised beds because they drain better. We have very clay soil here um, in the area that I'm in and it just holds a lot more moisture and too much moisture for these tubers which are prone to rotting. So this year I did the raised beds and it's working out so much better. Um, it's working out great. So the, um, so that's the first thing is watering. The first thing I learned was that dahlias like consistent watering. They are very prone to, um, to rotting. And, um, so the raised beds definitely worked better because they just drain better. Um, I did not mulch my beds this year, um, which if I mulch, at least for the things like the cucumbers and the melons that like water to fruit and to grow, I didn't have to water them as much and they did fine, but dollies are not going to tolerate the mulching as well because it's going to hold in extra moisture. And if you have a few days of steady rain, that could be the difference between your dahlias rotting and your dahlias surviving. So the raised beds worked a lot better. Um, they are a full sun flower. They do like the full sun in Texas. You know, full sun is a lot of heat and a lot of direct sunlight. So that is something to take into consideration and that was something I wanted to see how they did this year with the full sun that we get here because um, some areas you just they need a shade cloth for the afternoon because it's too intense um, so far I haven't had any issues I do notice that they kind of do like my cucumbers and droop in the afternoon when the heats um, yeah, at his peak and they're more stressed out, but then they pick right back up when the sun goes down. Um, so they're being very tolerant of that and different varieties might do better and other varieties might do a little bit worse when it comes to that aspect. Um, so that's working really well in terms of the full sun and the raised beds for good drainage. In terms of checking to see when I need to water, because I do see a lot of people say, oh, I water 15 minutes twice a day or 15 minutes, 30 minutes every day. Um, my watering in the bed, especially with my schedule because I'm a nurse and I work 12 hour shifts, um, I kind of water based on need. So I go into the ground and I dig down. This is already moist because we got a morning um, shower today, but I dig down a few inches and I just see what the water feels like there. Um, it's got a little bit of dampness on the top, but it's not super soaked from our passing rainstorm that we had this morning, um, which is fine. That'll be fine for today, and then I'll check it again tomorrow. Um, so that's how I water. When, if you go down a few inches and that soil is still dry, then I water. Also, plants are smart and reactive to their environments, and they're going to tell you when they need water. They're going to start getting kind of droopy. Um, 
and you can see that um, that stress on them so that has worked out well for me so far this year on this scale um, some people do drip irrigation uh, to provide consistent watering which I haven't experimented with um, but I might in the future um, I would have to learn more about it um, so that has worked out great for me for for watering for now but there's a lot of um, people who pinch their dahlias and people who don't um, and that was a new thing for me this year because this is the first year I've gotten more full-grown dahlias um, but I looked at it did the research and most often it's a mental challenge to pinch your dahlias because you have to wait longer for blooms and you feel like oh, I'm cutting part of my plant away. Sometimes you're cutting buds off. You can see where I pinched there. Um, I pinched all except for a couple of my dahlias, but the idea is that you pinch and then those, these, these two stems grow up um, as side shoots and then you get double the leaves, double the stems, and then double the blooms. Uh, sometimes more than double. So that's the idea behind pinching is to get more blooms, bushier plants versus one straight plant. Um, and so far that has worked out really well. Um, I'll show you when I get to my cafe au lait, the one that I didn't pinch and the difference between it uh, and the ones I did. In terms of pinching, it really comes down to if you have the time. In Houston, we have something like 270 or 290 days in our growing year um, that we can uh, grow things. And that's the time between our last frost and our first expected frost date. So it's a very long growing season. And so I have the extra time to pinch and wait for more things um, to bud and to bloom versus someone who might live in a colder climate where they get a lot less uh, then you know you have to make that determination uh, to pinch or to start indoors um, I didn't start indoors because these go in the ground I think they went in the ground in March um, end of March something like that but you can start them indoors and get them established if you um, want to get a jump start on the um, the plant establishing itself and growing before you can transplant it outdoors just to get a little bit of a uh, few weeks you know on on the growing of the dahlias so that you can enjoy them more during the season so that's pinching watering sunlight um, in terms of disease there's there are dahlia diseases um, and you can look them up there's some really great photos on the internet of leafy gall and crown gall mosaic um, disease which is um, issues with like the leaves um, I haven't had any issues so far knock on wood with disease so that's been really great um, but it's something to take into consideration in terms of just being knowledgeable about it what those things are and how to identify them early because those things are they're contagious across your dahlias and they can um, leave the disease in the soil and then you have to take care of the soil so that nothing you plant there gets those diseases you know in the next growing season or whatnot in terms of pests the only pests i've seen so far have been cucumber beetles and um, these caterpillars um, these moth caterpillars that have been eating the leaves and i've used a combination of just squishing them when i see them and um, captain jack's dead bug which I spray on everything, but I don't spray on the on the actual buds um, because I'm I've looked it up and I've seen mixed reviews in terms of if it's safe for bees or not, and I'm not willing to take that chance and harm um, pollinators. So, um, so I've used that. I've also there's one that I use called Be Safe, and that has worked really well with spider mites and aphids, um, but I haven't had any issues so far this year with those. Um, but I've used those to help kind of prevent the caterpillar issues um, in addition to just squishing 
those and the cucumber beetles when I see them. Um, the caterpillars were going for the leaves and the cucumber beetles were going for the petals. And I'll show you in my um, cafe au lait, they seem to really like, um, I have some holes in the petals I can point out in terms of being able to identify those. Um, slugs and snails really go after dahlias as well, especially when they're sprouting and they're very small. So that's something to take into consideration and look for. Um, I have not had that issue in the raised beds. I do have um, snails in my uh, my flower beds and I use diatomaceous earth, some DE. And I just kind of sprinkle it on all the leaves and around um, in addition to removing them when I see them. There's beer traps you can use, there's other things, but um, the DE and you know, just removing and inspecting has worked really well for those. I'm in zone 9A, so in in terms of zone and if you don't know your zone, you should look it up. It's going to give you a lot of information in terms of being able to identify plants that are going to be hardy in your area and plants that are not um, and give you information in terms of frost dates and whatnot. In my zone, dahlias can be left in the ground. In northern climates where you get your hard frost and snow and ice, you, in order for them to survive the winter, you need to dig them up and remove them and store them effectively for the winter. There's tons of videos on YouTube of that for people who live in that climate. I don't live in a climate that I need to dig them up. However, because Houston is such a wet climate, last year um, the dahlias that didn't um, rot during the season, the ones I had in my pots, um, ended up rotting over the winter. And I thought that they were gonna be fine. We got one um, like ice storm freeze that came in. I pulled them in um, in the house, like not even in the garage, I pulled them in the house because we had temperatures in the single and um, teens, single digits in the teens for days. Um, so I kept them in the house where it was 60 degrees so that they wouldn't um, be damaged by the temperatures. But they ended up, I, I went to see if they were still in there and the soil was completely empty. They just completely rotted. So um, I, that's something I'm going to have to take into consideration for this year. And I'm planning on um, pull it, pulling up some of the tubers that I want to keep um, and leaving some in as an experiment to see how it goes um, this year. So yeah, in the colder zones, you do have to dig them up and, and store them um, so that they stay dry um, and dormant for the winter. And, and then you can also divide tubers. So uh, the kind of like lilies, um, lilies multiply under the ground and you can divide them into um, multiple plants. You can do the same thing with dahlias. And there's a ton of videos on that too that are super helpful. Um, I haven't had to do that, but you know, in my experimentation, you know, for this winter uh, upcoming, I will see if the ones that I dig up in store, if they make it, you know, how to, you know, divide them and um, and do that so that I do get more, you get more plants out of it and more flowers. Um, there are a lot of different dahlia types. So this is a water lily style dahlia. And I don't know this one's name because um, it was not supposed to be in the mix that I got. Um, it's very pretty. And I ended up with three plants of this same one, even though it was a mix. Um, so that is a beautiful shape. I think it's one of my favorite shapes of the dahlias, but I haven't had any pom-poms yet. The mix is also supposed to include a couple pom-poms. These first three are this type. Um, this one hasn't bloomed yet, but I do see a start of what looks like purple or pink. So... I can't really tell, you know, in this stage, I'm, I'm not so proficient that I can tell what dahlia is going to be what. Um, so I don't know if that's going to be a pom-pom or another water lily. Um, it's definitely a different type because the leaves look different. Um, they're nice and green. The stems are very green, whereas these all um, look very, look, they will, they're the same. So they look the same. And you can see the dark red variegation in the leaves, um, in the veining and the stems are a darker red and this one looks different. So, so far that is a, a very good sign that <laughs> I didn't get the same one again. And I can't wait to see what it is, um, because the mix that I got has a lot of variety. Um, this one over here, I thought it was a dud. It, it sprouted and it completely stopped growing and then all of a sudden it decided to, to 
to try growing more. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, I probably won't pinch it just so that it can just keep focusing on growing and blooming. Um, and yeah, we'll see what happens with that, with that little one. Um, so these are a mix of five, the old rose mix from Eden Brothers, um, who has a great variety of dahlias. Um, from what I know that they're, they're a reseller. So people, they get dahlias from other farms and then resell them versus, um, companies that grow them themselves and, and then sell the tubers. Um, but they have a lot of very beautiful mixes and varieties. Um, and their customer service has always been really great every time I've worked with them or had questions. Um, so that's this bed. I have four in this bed. Now look at these four. And you can see there's a big difference already in just the height of the plants, which is kind of funny because they're all in the same bed, in the same soil, getting the same sunlight. Um, yeah. Um, so this one on the very left is the only one I did not pinch in the garden beds. Um, and you can see it had a beautiful, like purplish pink bloom. It was the first one to start blooming, but the, this one over here, which is another just absolutely gorgeous. This is a very, like a beige and there's a little bit of blush color in there. You see more blush in this one. Um, it is a little bit different color because the cafe lays can vary in color. Um, but they're, they're blooming at about the same time. And this one I pinched and this one I didn't. So, um, and then this one I pinched and it's the same height as this one I didn't. So I didn't see a whole lot of variety in terms of if I pinch or if I don't pinch, you know, bloom times and, um, height difference. But you can see how pretty they are and how different they are. And they're both the same. As far as I know, they're both the same <laughs> uh, variety, which is Cafe Ole, which is a very popular one. This one already looks like it's going to be, um, have a little bit of purple as well. Um, but so bloom time about the same gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous um, blooms. And the cucumber um, beetles have really enjoyed this one. Um, and you can see a little bit of holes right here. Um, and I think right here inside a little bit. But um, like I said, hopefully squishing and everything will work. Um, they like my cucumbers too, so I look for them on that and try to just squish them when I see them. Um, so these are my cafe au lait, which I'm in love with. So this is one on the, this one on the end. I love the beige and blush combination. So this is one I, I'm going to try to dig up and save over the winter and see if I can save the tuber and plant it next year. And I might leave, you know, another one in here and just see if it makes it. Um, we'll see. If it does, I'll probably relocate it um, because we're going to, add to four foot by eight foot beds at the top of our um, yard by that fence and so all my dahlias are going to be there um, next year. So um, the other thing that is important to know for dahlias in terms of, all right, so we covered sun, water, pests, and uh, the other thing to consider is going to be fertilizing. Um, so I've researched it and we you know, read on Facebook groups, like what other people do. Um, I have been using this fertilizer called what bloom, bloom something. I'll, I'll post a picture or picture of it. Um, and it is, it is a low nitrogen fertilizer, which is what dahlias like. They do not like a lot of nitrogen. Nitrogen is what's going to give you the good, you know, hardy leaves, beautiful green leaves. But in terms of blooms, you want low nitrogen. It's going to need the phosphorus and the potassium, which are the other two numbers. When you look at fertilizers, uh, the first one's nitrogen. And I forget, uh, 
what order the other two come in, but the other two are phosphorus um, and potassium. And it'll, it'll tell you, you know, when you turn it on the back, what percent of, of each. Um, so that's what I use to fertilize. I've seen some people fertilize once a month, some pipe people fertilize every week, some people fertilize every two weeks. Um, I have already amended my soil when I start it, start my growing season with trifecta plus. So it already has, um, bone meal and blood meal and worm castings and fish emulsion and a good combination of things. It's a combination of a, a, uh, immediate fertilizer as well as a slow release fertilizer, um, which is why I like to use it. But in terms of the blooms, I've been using the bloom booster. I used it, used it, um, to about two and a half weeks ago. So I'm going to do another, um, batch this weekend and a little goes a long way. I think it's a teaspoon per gallon. So I usually do last time I did a half a teaspoon for like my pitcher that I have and spread it out among like these four. Um, and they tolerated that really well. Um, so you don't want to over fertilize. You can burn your plants with fertilizer if you over fertilize. Um, so more is not necessarily better, but I, uh, and I'm just showing you my dahlias while I talk. Um, but I will do that again. It's been two and a half weeks. I think every two weeks is going to be my goal um, in terms of keeping the blooms going this season. There's other fertilizers um, out there that a lot of people, you know, on YouTube and, and Facebook say that they use. Just find what works for you. You know, it depends on what soil you have. Soil you have. Last year, I also amended this with um, compost. Uh, this year, I didn't do the compost. I just added. Uh, I just amended with the with my trifecta plus. So I didn't think it needed any more compost. I still have like mushrooms that pop up and stuff, which is a good indicator of good soil. So, so you're definitely going to want to look into fertilizing um, just to help feed. So dahlias are tubers and the the tubers kind of look like a group of potatoes or if you get an individual one of one potato and that's the nutrients to really promote the dahlia to get to the stage of having great leaves and it needs a little bit extra in terms of the energy and the nutrients to bloom. Water, sun, fertilizer, definitely you know do your research and figure out what's going to work best for you. They're going to need you know something to promote great blooms. Do they need it to have blooms? No. Um, but if it helps you get more blooms, um, and bigger blooms, then, you know, consider how much that's going to be worth it for you. And the last thing I wanted to show you is my uh, other two cafe au lait's, which I put in these pots and I put, um, the either just peachy or peaches and cream or something, um, a peach dahlia, which was a smaller, I want to say it was a water lily, um, style dahlia I put in these pots last year. And so I did the cafe au lait's in here and they are not as tall. The stems are not as big, um, and they're slower to bloom. So I think I'm going to stick to smaller varieties in these pots or do something different next year since I'll have two big beds to dedicate to dahlias. Um, but this one is about to bloom. Thank goodness. Cause I didn't think that was going to happen. Um, the other thing I think with the pots is that, um, they probably don't retain fertilizer as well or as much. Um, and this is my other cafe lait, which, um, is a little bit smaller. Um, but is still growing. It's just slow. So I'm going to definitely fertilize these. I think I'm going to try fertilize these every week, but it's hard because they're in such small pots. So I need such a small amount of um, fertilizer because that boom bloom booster, I think, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it's called, um, is so potent with uh, really high numbers of phosphorus and um, potassium. So yeah. So I hope this was informative. I hope that I inspired you to try dahlias if you didn't think that they would work in your area and in your, um, your zone. Um, I hope that you give these a try because they're absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous flowers and they're absolutely 
fun to grow and to see. And I swear every day I come out and they're more beautiful and I, I can't get enough. I'm so excited to grow these and inspired to grow these. And there's so many different kinds and colors and sizes. And, um, I think they're, they're fun for me, but they'd be fun, you know, if you have kids. Um, so I'm still learning. I'm no expert, but I wanted to share information with you on what I've learned so far. Um, so that if you are looking to try dahlias, you can get, you know, some basic information, um, and mostly just inspiration. Uh, And I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye.